Hey there, so today I'll be demoing Awesome Search. So Awesome Search is a tool for exploring Awesome List for research, inspiration, or reference. So for anyone who isn't familiar with Awesome Lists, Awesome Lists are essentially a community curated list about a certain programming language or framework or any sort of software related topic. And there's one for just about any programming language or framework under the sun. So Awesome List was created um, mostly to tackle the problem of finding sort of the high quality tutorials and, and niche blog posts amidst all the noise. So search results are frequently SEO to death and it makes it hard to find golden content that might be a niche engineering blog or a community recommended uh, module or library for a specific uh, task you're trying to solve in your project. So Awesome Search is not meant to act like Google in any way, but rather focus on searching curated resources uh, that just might not rank as high on Google. So the cr prototype currently features searching across different awesome lists. And to get into the demo, I'll go ahead and pull up the CLI version of the app. So Awesome Search is available as a Python CLI, so you can go ahead and pip install Awesome Search uh, that's currently live and, and after you create your, your virtual environment, or you can also use the Raycast integration. So for any Raycast users, there's a Raycast script which lets you uh, do a sort of, use a sort of watered down version of the CLI directly from Raycast. So to get started with the demo, um, after you install Awesome Search, if you do Awesome Help, you can see a list of all the different commands that are available. And here you can see that essentially you can, you give it a query and you can specify different languages and awesome lists that you want to filter by. So as a sort of example, um, you know, let's say you're looking for job queues. So you're working on a project or, or maybe initially just doing research on different projects that use job queues. So you can go ahead and search a uh, queue across all the different lists. Uh, there's going to be quite a few, so you want to see all 10 results and sort the top results by stars. So this query here will go ahead and search across all the different awesome lists. And you can see some of the more popular projects here um, across different languages from, from Python to PHP. But maybe you're working on a Django app. So, you know, you're working on a Django app and you need a queue um, to, to implement into your project. So you might search a queue and then what you can do is use the lists um, facet to essentially specify Django. And what this does is only searches across awesome lists that are related to Django. There might be multiple for a popular framework like Django, and you can go ahead and pull up um, results that are that are for job queues in Django. So you can go ahead and, and sort these results by stars, and you can see some of the popular uh, results here, like Celery, Huey, and of course, Django RQ. Um, there's another way, so you can also just write this query as um, Django Q, of course, and you get a very similar result. So the only, you know, only difference is if you want to specifically make sure that the results are from an awesome list that's related to Django, you can use the first query. And then there's a bunch of other things you can do, um, like you know, specifying different uh, languages using the, the languages flag. Um, and, and that hopefully gives you a bit of an idea of what the CLI is used for and what it can do. So as I mentioned, there's also a, a Raycast integration. So if you install that script, you can pull it up after typing the search command. And as a quick example, you know, maybe you're looking for a payments library and you're using Python. So you want to handle payments from Python and you can see some of the top projects from a community curated list here. So you see Merchant, Django, PayPal, and so on. Um, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what, what option search is. And now to get into how does awesome search actually work? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this diagram here. So you can see the CLI and Raycast, um, they both query the, the Django app, which is currently running on App Engine, and that in turn queries the Redis instance, which has the Redis search module. And to start with this explanation, um, so the first step in, in, in implementing this is defining the index. Um, so that can be done, so you can define an index using the Redis search library, and here all, all, all keys in the Redis instance that, that are prefixed with resource are, 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 create, are inserted into the full text index. Um, so this is just to allow for different content types. So right now there's only GitHub projects, but this could be extended to uh, if you're inserting tweets as well. And this gives you a community way to index all of the resources that are being inserted. 
Uh, and then the next step is actually creating the index. And here you can specify the different fields in the document that you want to insert into the index and also specifying different weights uh, for different fields. So for example, if you want to add a higher weight to the, the repo name, you can do so here. So for the actual schema of how the projects are represented in the, um, in the Redis instance, you can see that here. So each, each project has the, the repo description and so on with some additional metadata that's fetched after using the GitHub API. And as just a quick example of how Redis is used here is awesome list can appear on, on so a project can appear on many different awesome lists. So going back to the Django example, um, sort of a, a job queue library that's written in Python may appear on the Python awesome list and it might appear on multiple Django awesome lists. So there might be many of them for a popular framework like Django. And you can use a set to essentially find all of the awesome lists that a project appeared on. And then when you're inserting a document into Redis, you can set that as a property here as the list property. And that allows us to do a faster search. So you can then go ahead and search uh, what, what projects appear on a Django awesome list. And you, can, and you can sort of add that facet. And that brings us to the next point, which is the search endpoints. And here you can see there's just a generic, uh, just a generic query endpoint where you just do a full text search for the query on all the different projects. And then there's the faceted search, which makes use of the field modifiers. Uh, and that allows you to specify things like languages and awesome lists and resource types. Um, so that's the end of sort of how the project actually uh, is implemented in, in terms of Redis. And the rest of the documentation focuses more on deploying the project and how you would set up your local development environment. So throughout the project, I try to focus a lot on, on, on documentation and testing. Um, you know, I'm planning to work on this project for the next few months and also sort of hopefully allow com contributors uh, to easily uh, get started and, and, and build their own features if they want. So you can go ahead and set up your Python virtual environment and, and, and install the dependencies so you can that spin up a local Redis instance and, and that you can be used for debugging and then you can add your GitHub API key, see the database and spin up the Django server. Um, and then for testing the CLI, you can install it locally or, or use the Raycast integration um, locally to test your changes. There's also a test suite that you can make use of. Um, and then for the actual deployment. So currently the, there's a live demo after you, after, you install, if, after you pip install Awesome Search or install the Raycast CLI, um, the current app is running on App Engine. And, and currently the data set is more skewed towards uh, libraries that are related to Python, uh, Ruby, uh, data science libraries, Redis. So sort of more data, data engineering libraries. Um, and, and, once, and that project is running on App Engine. So going back to the diagram here, uh, you can see that there's also the index, indexer component of the project. So currently the live demo does not actually feature the indexer, which would allow users to submit their own list for indexing from the CLI. Um, currently the app is deployed on App Engine mostly to reduce the cost of running it uh, because uh, otherwise it would, it would require deploying things on Kubernetes, which is just more expensive when there is very little usage during the demo period right now. So Redis Q does not actually work with App Engine. Uh, that would require deploying things on Kubernetes. But the indexer component essentially, um, the Django app currently has a users module, which allows users to sign up, uh, get authenticated and, and get themselves an API key, which they could then use to, they, which they could then locally save uh, in the CLI app and use that to submit their own lists for indexing. So the, the list would go to the Django app, which would, which would insert into the queue um, using our queue. And then a worker would use the same uh, script that's currently being used for indexing to essentially um, index the list and insert into Redis. So one nice thing about Redis is that things are indexed in real time. Uh, so as soon as the scraping is finished, the, the list is available for searching. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what Awesome Search is and how it could be used. Um, as some next steps, so I'm looking to sort of continue developing Awesome Search over the next few months. And some interesting next steps include adding support for this. Uh, so this programmable search engine here sort of gives a demo of what the search component for blogs would look like. So one thing, when you search for something like Redis or a framework or popular technology is that a lot of the time, the top results will be a lot of SEO content or just sort of generic tutorials. 
But if you're just looking for how different companies have already used a specific technology in production and the engineering challenges that overcame, um, for example, for Redis, you can see that when you have a curated, when you only use a curated set, such as here about, such as here about 600 engineering blogs, um, you can see that the results here from different companies like Shopify and Twitter and so on that have used Redis in production. And, and you can read about the different engineering challenges they've overcame. So over the next few months, I plan to continue working on Awesome Search and implementing the user submissions, um, engineering blogs, also deploying a, a beefier Redis instance to be able to index more content, um, and as well as deploying things on Kubernetes. So I hope that gave you a bit of an idea of what Awesome Search is. Thank you for listening, and I hope to hear your feedback.